episode 43 with the fellas from the Rhino Country. It's 43. Tom Wilson. Ah, he's, he's, relevant. He's, he's relevant. He's relevant. He's relevant. That's remember. something we talked right. about. Right? Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, it is. Episode Tom Wilson. Tommy yeah. Wilson. Let's go. He, and you know what? The good thing about Tommy is he can play the game, too. Yeah, he can. You know what I mean? So our, our TV system, Yeah, I, I watch. Yeah, you whatever. do. I just watch hockey. And they're talking about him playing on Team Canada. Like he, was a, he was a major, and now they're not so sure. Because in a short series, you can put a first line player on a fourth line, and ask yeah, them I mean, to do yeah. a different job, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. And they were thinking, well, maybe we should put Tom Wilson on our fourth line. He could be number he, thirteen. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like, and, and and so now there's this debate because it comes out December fourth, right? Yeah, on that's next week. And so there's been these debates. Who's coaching that? Um, I don't know actually. I know the American is uh, Sully, right? Isn't Sully from Pittsburgh doing it? I have no idea. I honestly, honestly do. I don't and know. Johnny Cooper and uh, Jeff Blaschel. Uh, who's the other? I think Torts is on there, too, as an assistant. Um, and then Canada. Um, oh, my God. Um, which we call Doug Wils- Doug um, Armstrong's the GM. Um, I'm not sure. Paul Maurice? Paul Maurice? I think Paul is there as an assistant. I don't huh. think he was the. I don't know who would be that. I have no idea. Yeah. But anyway. That's coming out right around the corner. So Tom Wilson, yeah. episode number 43. 43. Love it. Interesting weekend for for both sides of things. Um, and, hey, you guys split 500. You all played them both both games, my, my opinion, from what I watched. Um, Friday night, they're a big freaking team. I, I, I was on during the anthem. I, I, I literally, and I, I, A.J. Reed was standing in front of me, and, and he's a big man. And I'm looking out at their blue line. I'm like, is that a basketball team? <laughs> like, they have four defensemen that are not shorter than six four. He's, you know, ever since while well, we've been in the league, they've always been big. Uh, Harry always. Harry Mayhood loves big teams. Um, that ice sheet there is, in fact, I was just coming out of a conversation with a kid, um, with a player, I should say, um, how 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 different it is because it's smaller. And it's a fun. Remember yeah. the neutral zone there? You played there. Yeah. Remember, remember the neutral zone, how small it is? Yeah. It's only, what's a neutral zone? 52 feet? Pfft, I don't know. I what couldn't it is. tell you. But yeah, yeah it's small. I it's think shorter, it's 52 it's shorter. feet. But I think there it's like 42 feet. So it's, it's a different game. And I think that Harry being Harry, and, and I think he builds his teams like, you know, you play 30 home games, yeah. right? It's like playing an Olympic sheet. Yeah, yeah, you're building for the road. You should, you're building you should, for home. You should like, have the home, you want, home ice advantage, right? You want Medrick Balduke on a, on a 200 by 100 sheet. Yeah. Do you want yeah. Metric Balduk on a no. on a 160 by 60 sheet? No. You know, probably. <laughs> well, <laughs> well yeah. I do, but I would take. <laughs> but, I but yeah, but you know what I mean. Like he, yeah. he's going to play better on a bigger sheet when yeah, he can yeah. he can burn burn turn and burn. You know, but where those guys, man. But the difference between their last year's team and I maybe this is wallpaper, bulletin board stuff. I'm about to say, but last year they were big, but they were good. Yeah. And this year they're big, and right now I'm yeah. just saying right now they're not. They're yeah, not you good. Know it, now, like, they might get good. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah. There's still a lot of season left. But right now, they're they're not good. We had a epic, and we pissed that one away. Right. We had an epic fight on Friday night. Oh boy, that was a good oh, one. Oh yeah. That, and, that, and I'm that's all there, over social media right now. And I'm going. What are you doing? What are you doing? But I get it, man. But, well, you and I get it. And I just had a meeting with him, with Kimber, yeah. with Cookie, and I just had a meeting with him. I was like, okay, in 2006, I would have been standing on the bench. Oh yeah. Going. Woo-hoo, yeah. right? Yeah. Now it's 2024, and I'm going, what's up? What are you doing? Yeah. And it's not because I don't it's like a, it. It's, I love it. Yeah. The fact is that he's one of our, he's one oh. of our five, yeah. and he's, he's a good player. Like I, I like him. He's getting better, but now you're taking yourself out. So what our conversation was, I said to him, I was in a fight once where it was under five to go in the second, and I got 17 minutes, and this is back in 19, where they didn't hand out. It was fives. Yeah. But I think I, I gouged the guy. I don't know what I did. And it was 17 <laughs> minutes. Well, then we had an extended intermission. So the I penalty did. was literally like 45 was minutes long. Yeah. So I get back to the bench, and there's like, I don't know, under eight minutes to go in, in, the, in the game. I turned around, and I looked at him. I said, I'm done. Like, <laughs> if you need me, I'm here. But otherwise, yeah. I, I've had just – I had an hour off. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. The, like, I'm not saying I'm not playing. I'm just saying if yeah. you can go without me, you yeah, had for just, the last hour, you can, you can keep – like, I'm not uh, – like, I've – so I just said to Cookie, I said, you do that. And I, and I said, as a man, I, I love it. 
I said, but in 2024, I'm looking at it like, it's, it's so you just got a 45-minute penalty. Because when he got the fight, right, now yeah. he's got the intermission. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you got to play. Like, it, it, so we just, we had a nice conversation. It was fun. And, I, and I'm like, dude, I loved it. Yeah. It's and for boy, the brand, was, was that. That was good, man. You, like, he, that you know, kid obviously it was, it, is I'm not going to say it was a one-way street. Because you're showing up with a guy like that, you, you get oh. credit. But because he was throwing them too. Oh boy! You know he, he, he landed he, a couple. Oh, yeah, absolutely, he did. You know he fell, got back up, fell and got back up. And that, dude, you know, he stood in there. Yeah, good for okay, you. Okay, so I had a coach uh, years and years ago, Ray good Palmer. For him. Ray Palmer, yes, absolutely, I love that kid, um, Ray Palmer. And we would be on the we. This is back in tier three days, back in 06. and we had men like we had guys with beards oh, and yeah. right, and we'd be sitting on the bus, and the players would go out and they come to the parking lot to do their warm up, and Ray would be sitting there. He just turned and looked at me. He go, Coomsey, we're gonna kill these guys, <laughs> right? Because we got hair on our chests, and you know, our, our, we got men, yeah. right? So I don't know if you do this, but I do it. So the other day on Friday, I'm walking. I just walked from the locker room at five o'clock, and I walk out with the ice sheet. Don't know why. Like I'm just killing some time, and I saw that kid. Hey, big boy. And I, I'm walking by him, and I. Like, you know, just looked, and I stopped, and I literally, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he, so I, I don't know the story behind the kid. I, I think last year, <coughs> I think he, he left their team. I don't think R.A. wanted him, so the kid went home and trained. I think he went to Toronto or something. Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, if he's not 240 of solid muscle. Well, I asked you like, that. Like, he is... An absolute specimen. Yeah. So Cookie, right? He he's not afraid of nothing. I love that kid, and I love what he brings to our team. I, I love the kid in every sense. And I literally turned to Sherm, and I went, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> now I didn't mean "oh no" as in like I don't want to see this happen. I went, "Oh no!" Because why is it happening? Because there's no there's like no reason. There's no reason for it other than they needed some momentum. And I'm looking through my five o'clock. Walk through going, oh, oh my God. <laughs> and Cookie stood in there, boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, boy. And he did land some. He's an awesome kid, man. And, and, I, and I told him that this morning. I said, like, dude, you're playing. Like, play. Like, if you're going to fight, I, I don't care. Just tell me. Like, hey, coach, I think tonight's the night. Like, I, 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 you know, they got, okay, well, I'll dress 7D because he, he's an important part of our team. And, yeah. and, it's, and if it was five minutes, my attitude and my emotion towards fighting would never have changed. Oh yeah, ever. Oh yeah. But now that is the that is the top three things since 1994, in my opinion, that's changed in hockey is coaching, goaltending, and the 17 minute penalty yeah. for fighting. And if you had five minutes, I'd be like, you want to do that twice a game? Have at yeah, it. Like, absolutely. You can do it twice and and still not miss one fifth of the time you miss now when you fight with an intermission and like even if you have 5 minutes and you fight with 2 minutes left so who cares yeah right you got an intermission you got 2 minutes or 3 minutes when you come out who cares yeah. still in the but game but 17 yeah man it was definitely but fun anyway. to watch for sure you split 500 you know we do we just talked about it briefly we're going to move on but this weekend this is another tough one for you yes it's, you know Mr. Wildfong many games against him so oh it's going to be a chess match hopefully hopefully we come out top which we will we're going to it's not a matter of we've we? um we, we, we've made a huge attempt this week. Our focus has been us as people this yeah. week um, and not process, not our, our, our preparation. Yeah. Um, we've had, um, I'm still in the middle of it now with, with meetings. Um, we've had some issues, um, both as a team and, and I think individually, um, me personally uh, as well. Um, we, we met this morning um, with a very... Um, Open dialogue, um, yeah. come to Jesus, Joe Coombs needing to be better, um, um, you know, showing some vulnerability amongst one another. Um, because that's, that's good at times, right? I, I hope so. Yeah. Um, 100%. We, 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 we went at them. We got off the bus um, <laughs> on Saturday night after pissing one away, and they did, um, I don't think it was 276 burpees, I think, um, and the message was clear. Um, and so when we come in on Monday, I knew they sort of expected a lot of the same. So we, we gave it to them again. Um, and then yesterday we went and played golf. Yeah. And um, I wanted to be a little bit more vulnerable and say, hey, guys, like, I, 
I get it. I'm hard, but we're we're here to have fun and, and, and not squeeze a stick too hard. But it starts with the foundation, and, and our foundation right now is really inconsistent. And um, so I felt with some meetings, um, meetings have gone a little bit longer. Um, I know I have an open dialogue with quite a few of our players, but there's some guys that are quiet. That's normal. Yeah. Um, I wanted to reach out to them. Um, I know there's been some guys asking for some video sessions and stuff like that, that, um, you know, with our days, it, we haven't got there. Um, and, and that's what we're doing. So yeah. our focus has really just been, oh, this week it's been more about maybe clearing the air. and and Because and, I think we're a good team. Um, I think we're different than, than what we ultimately thought we might be. Yeah. Um, but when we play together as a unit, uh, I like our group. I like our group a lot. You know, like with with every, everybody stumbles, right? Oh yeah. You know, it's part of it. You're not winning championships in September, October, November, but you know, we're we're 500. We're well, we're better than 500. So yeah. it's not it's not like the season's the shits because it's no. not right. But you know, it, it takes a lot, Joe. And and you know, this weekend I think we're going to see some good things. You know, I, I, I really do. do. Um, I'm excited to watch it. You know. I know you got a road trip tomorrow. You guys are leaving bright and early. Going to eat some turkey manana, Mr. Yeah. DeWolf. Thank Shout you. out to the DeWolf, the DeWolf family, family here. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, you know what? They, thank you. They saved our day because Sherm calls me last night, and he goes, Coomsey, I've called six restaurants, man. <laughs> Nobody's open. <laughs> really? So, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I said, well, I said, it looks like we're going to Subway at Lub's Truck Stop yeah. somewhere. <laughs> and, and, and see, that's the adversity that – people don't realize that these players face and, and in our job my job I, I i feel is to take the excuses away yeah and when you don't communicate about stopping at loves and feeding them a subway they're like what is going on here this is this is a joke like we can't have a piece of chicken and some you know and, and i understand i understand from a player's perspective so that's what this has been about is about understanding the adversity that situations pile sure. on our yeah. players and it's not us it's not me it's not you it's just what it is and it's life yeah. and, and we have to deal with this and um so we, we've had some fun with it but um when we were looking at it because of the time change and because of the distance <laughs> um like ritter, ritter my, my son's team they're leave, they only have six hours yeah and they're leaving all day and, and he told me this last night and i was like what why don't you leave at six o'clock and let the players be with their families for the day yeah and he's like no we're, we're we're having a team thanksgiving oh okay well now that makes sense yeah. well that's what the DeWolves have done for us yeah right so if without the DeWolves, i think we're eating subway three times tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> like, probably yeah like and, and so when when wolfie came to me and 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 um i was so appreciative and so i was like yes this answers a our, lot a lot like we're gonna sit down as a team in, in the confines of my guess is a, I know they're a lovely family, but lovely surroundings. Mm -hmm. And they're going out of the way. They're having two Thanksgivings tomorrow. Nice. They know they're doing one, I think, um, Mr. DeWolf said, with her, either his family or her family at midday. And then they're, they're then coming home and, and doing it that's again really nice. for us. And, and it saves our it saves yeah, our Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> like, so I'm really excited. Well, you're going to have to take some pictures when yeah. you're there, Joe. You can send them, send yes, them our yes, way. Yes, we and, will. And again, DeWolf family, thank you very yes, much. Thank you. Know, you. Um, yeah, it's going to be so good luck to you, Joe. Yeah, thank we'll, you. We'll obviously be thank watching you. on that. And Mikey, back over to you now. One, started off Friday good. Saturday, you guys shit the bed. Yep. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know how. Well, we pissed one away and you well, shit the bed. Sounds same, like a good mix. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's and then he couldn't be any more spot on. Sunday, you guys, you know, came back with some authority and, and you know, yeah. it's, um, it's tough, man. You know, you go into a weekend like that, and you're thinking it's point night as a player. I've been there, done it. Joe, I know you. <laughs> Mike, I know you as a player. Yep. But we get it. Um, anyway. Yeah. Um. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to T to go. <laughs> <laughs> little break here. <laughs> yeah, was, this is a pumpkin uh, pie uh, latte. Pumpkin pie chai. It's freaking pretty good. Yeah. This and one's what is hot, one? hot apple pie with oat milk. Sorry, Joe, I'm not giving you any. Well, uh, that's hot. That sounds as like that sounds like the moonshine. That it's pretty good shit stuff. Yeah. I mean, apple pie is always good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it is. Right. Anyway, I was, Mike, I was thinking there might be some Everclear to go. in there. Yeah, some boiled out. Everclear. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I want. Yeah. Tea to go. Are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there, there's no other way to say it. I mean, and this isn't to dog that hockey team in any way. You know, they're they're going through it as an expansion team, but. There's no excuse. There's no reason to lose a game to that hockey team. Right. There's none. 
Um, we outplayed them in the first period on Friday, played really well. We took our foot off the gas when we got really sloppy, and a lot of those habits carried over to Saturday night. We scored in the first seven seconds of the game on Friday, and then all of a sudden they popped it into cruise control. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it just, oh, this can be easy. These guys, you know, I, I heard the guys, you know, before they were, they, I can hear it in their voices, the way, what their attitude, what oh, their yeah, demeanor man. is. And I told him, you better be good. Like, you better tighten it up, and it's about getting better this weekend. It's not about anything else. And then when you, when you treat it like that and, and you, you go through the motions and what happens Saturday is what happens, and we got ourselves into penalty trouble. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, I mean, the penalties were 16 to 3. We had two stacked five-on-threes that we had to kill. and Stacked. Yeah, where you're waiting for the two minutes to come up on the board, and you're just so the guy, the guy wearing the armbands was helping you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. When there's seven guys in the box for 15 minutes, like, yeah, yeah. it was Listen, bad. It was 16 bad. to three, 16 to three, and you know oh, we're really trying to get our guys. I mean, to be a physical hockey team and play hard. And I received a text message from a parent on Saturday night, a funny one. I'm pretty sure we had some parents that they were pretty mad. I mean, I'll well, this particular parent was. Funny but mad, and I won't get into what he said, but it was pretty comical. I will say this: um, I was told by their uh, by their GM that the the security guards had to um, escort the referees out of the building on Saturday because they were threatened by what was apparently an El Paso fan. That's not cool. Yeah, and, and I didn't so, know that. Yeah, so it was. I have no idea. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, but you know what, was. man? Like, no, I'm, I, I'm not. You, I don't you think wonder. It's you wonder why nobody wants to officiate. Where the yeah. hell good? Like I used to do it, and the reason why I stopped doing it is because it was like, really? No, I don't you know, do good, it. Good, good, bad, or indifferent. Like, yeah, you, you need them. Yeah, no, you do need them. I mean, I think we could do without this guy personally, but um, <laughs> he was pretty brutal, and he heard it, you know. Keep but coming, it, the fines coming in. Yeah, exactly. He was. <laughs> it is. It is what it is. And um, at the end of the day, though, like that's not why we lost the game. No, oh. because we took some of those penalties. They were stupid penalties, yeah. and. Um, you know, a couple of them, yeah, their guys go down easy. So what? It's part of the game. Like, learn to play through it. Like you said, you got to take the excuses away from them. Yeah. And you know what? They didn't score their goal on the power play. Well, you know what? I was listening to this is kind of, well, I was listening to their pregame show. I think it was their, I don't know, let's call the coach. I'm not sure who it was. It was. was talking, and he was talking about officiating and how their guys have to learn to play through stuff and they're not used to the junior level and so, like, I don't know if the officiating crew was listening to it or not, but maybe that had something to do with it. It might have. I don't know. Um, I thought it was the weirdest thing, but anyway. Yeah, it sucked. It's hard to play a game that way um, when you're on the kill, but at the end of the day, we had chances. We had 20 shots in the first period. We don't score, and in the third period, they scored at the 17-minute mark, five on five. We have a whole period to go of hockey, and when we when that goal got scored, it was like, oh, we lost. That's it. Big and egg. We started feeling bad for ourselves, making excuses about the refs, and I showed them on Sunday plenty of clips where – we were we had no urgency and we were completely on the perimeter trying to score goals and they're very good because they've had to all year of just packing the house and making it tight and if you're not willing to go to the inside yeah you're not gonna yeah, score yeah, goals yeah. and shout out to their goalie he stood on his head yeah, he man. played a really good game yeah. I think he saw like fit north of fifty shots and he shut it out well, bottom line they won right yeah you know, so end of the day. but right. but to your point about officiating so we had a guy this weekend Friday night okay every single stick infraction he called okay hooking. Tripping, every single thing that I do is like he called. So at the end of the game, I said to, I don't know if there was players, but or whoever was standing around, I said, tomorrow night, he's going to be the exact opposite of what he was tonight, right? And what happened was exactly that. Yeah. Now he's calling boarding penalties, right? You don't think there was a boarding call the night before, but he didn't call it, yeah. right? So it, it's not that I don't say much to officials. I really don't. I only say when I'm when you really are bad. Like, I, I don't bother them. I don't. But to your, like, 16 to 3? Like, I know a referee, being Mike McCreary, our GM, he's a former referee. His dad's a Hall of Famer. And the consistency button is the same for them. That's what they're here to do is learn and grow and have a feel for it. But if you're an official, okay, and you've, you're at 16 to 3, like, I could say 7 to 3. You might not know you're at 7 to 3 that you've given that team seven penalties and them three. Right, I would say that's fair. But sixteen to three, yeah, really? Yeah, that's that's you know, like that's. I'm sorry, that's yeah. bad official. Yeah, you no, know, it's a bad you, official. You gotta, I'm sorry. You know, it is what it is. Now, does he deserve to be chased out of the building? No, but that's a bad official. You know, you try to keep it close to five hundred, right? But you, then you're looking for stuff. Like what I said, yeah. seven to three, fair, right? Absolutely. But sixteen to three? Yeah, that's tough. Stacked five v threes. 
Like if you're like you as an official, and I talk to Mike about this stuff all the time because he gets mad at me because I don't say anything to the officials. Like I, yeah. I really don't until it gets oh, to that point. Oh well, yeah. And what, he's what, like, what are you gonna do? Change he's their like, mind? Do you think he goes? I, Coombs, you know how long I was official? He they said this to me within the last week, and I said long time. He goes, do you know how many coaches I deuced in my? I don't know what he said. Eleven years or sixteen years? He said four. Yeah. These guys, they they take pleasure in deucing you. Oh yeah. Like well, I, they're, I've they're been deuced. Do I'm 23 <laughs> years. I've taken four deuces in my life in 23 years. Now I've been suspended a whole lot, <laughs> but I didn't take a deuce, right? Yeah. I just got kicked out of the game, right? <laughs> just like, see, or, or or repercussions came after the game where you know. But anyway, moving on, Mike. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, you're 16 good. to three. So and then you come back Sunday and you <laughs> it's not you, okay. You, 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 <laughs> you pull it off, which is good, and you get out of there with two out of three, which is you know in hindsight it's a good weekend. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I and I told the guys don't change anything just because he called it one way the night before. We don't change what we do. You just got to be a little bit more disciplined, a little bit tired. But you're but that's that's hard on you, because your message is the opposite. I'm yeah. But but they they don't know that. Like you said to me yesterday, you know that you just pulled my goalie. I might have been the bearer of bad news, but because of your actions, he's out of the game. Yeah. yeah did you see the goal that they called on on Sunday? Mm -hmm. The guy tells me so. The, the guy on the scorekeeper, um, or excuse me, the goal judge, he doesn't flick the light, and he's shaking his head that he didn't cross the line. Of course, our guys are saying he didn't cross the line. From the bench, it looked like he didn't, but, of course, my angle's terrible. Right. So the official comes over, and he skates up to me, and he says, Coach, 100%, I was in position. I saw it cross the line. I said, are you sure? I was like, you're not going to ask for any help or anything. He said, no, I can make the call if I know. And I was like, okay. So then, of course, we go back to video. Didn't go in. Um, hundred percent no, and I had to pull Graybill on that second one because it was the second five hole goal, and so yeah. he just he wasn't squeezing it. He and he, you know what, awesome kid, comes to the bench and he says, "I get it, yeah, I understand." And you know what, that wasn't a goal, and so after the game, I did tell the official, I said, "That's on you. You got a kid pulled who should have been playing that game still, and that's on you." So, and he said it, and he still stood by it. He said it went in. Yeah, and then this this weekend <laughs> we have New Mexico coming. <laughs> Do you guys play on Sunday? Which is yeah. Oh, so I get to come to a game. There we go. I'm super excited. I, I, we haven't had this all year long. Yeah. I'm super pumped. I'm going to be standing right here for you viewers, right here behind us. I'm going to be sitting right D here. Depending, in the how we, depending on how we play, you might come give the pregame speech. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, that'll be a good test for you, too, because they, they, they got a good hockey club. and Really good. Um, it'll be a good test for you. Another one. Yeah, they're coached really well. They play really fast. They're relentless. They move Banksy, the puck I well. know you're watching. Oh, yeah. I know I know you're watching, buddy. Yeah. No hey, post the board material here, buddy. No, you're watching, here, buddy. Bud. <laughs> There's the a vault there. is closed, my friend. <laughs> yeah, New Mexico is awesome. They're a good team. We'll be lucky yeah. to get one, right? So. Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. It'll you know be. I mean? Just worry no, about the be, first it, one. You know they do a good job, man. You, you like, can't get all three if you don't get the first one. That's right. Worry about yeah, you got to score to win. Yeah, you know? That's right. Score more. But it'll be good. It'll be a good one. So we look forward to those guys coming in. We Thanksgiving weekend is always a good weekend. Um, it's the first time in a long time we haven't played on a Wednesday. Yeah, that's what I was um, hearing about that. Yeah, I'm not really sure. My days kind of just kind of go together anyway. I just assume every fifth or six days there's a game. Um, <laughs> you had last yeah. weekend off. Yeah, I know. That's I'm kind that's of. Very, that's uh, very. Yeah, it's rare. Like, man, when do I go back to work? It's very rare for you guys. You usually work seven days a week. Yeah, you know. Um, but it's good. You know, it'll be good. It'll be a good weekend. So I'm um, looking forward to it. You know, we got some sick jerseys you guys are going to be wearing. What do you got? Can I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Um, no. Hold I'll on. Hold to it. It. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll tell we'll you tell off you, the yeah. air. Yeah. Oh, they're pretty nice. The yeah. guy that designed him, you know, he didn't really know what he was doing. <laughs> A-Ron. Hey, just kidding, buddy. A-Ron. <clears throat> hey. This for horses and cows eat it too, Where's bro. Where's Jay? <laughs> um, Jay's, I, Jay's off today. We so haven't talked to Jay about Jay in a while. Okay. I saw Jay yesterday. So I haven't seen Jay much. I call him a couple times. So yesterday, he, he, I'm in a meeting. And, and it's, it's hey. what time was it yesterday? It was, it was mid-morning. It's like ten thirty, and he opens the door. And he barges right in, right? Which I don't, I don't care. And he's got spring rolls from um, Panda Express. He goes, "Hey, I know you like these. These are for you." And I said, "Jay, you and I both know that you're just not eating them. You didn't get these for me. You're just not eating them." <laughs> I, I got. I, I have a Jay story. This is this is a funny one. So. <laughs> and I won't get into complete detail, but for years now, there's been somebody in this building that that does artwork on people's cars. 
Oh, I oh you have no idea. I had to take mine to the car wash because I, heard, I went I to heard, rub it. I heard about that. I, did I tell you that or did somebody tell you? Somebody that? told me. It about was that. him. Son of a bitch. <laughs> and, and 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 I I I went to rub it off. I had a bottle of water in my hand and I and I went on the back window and I and it wouldn't come off. In fact, it made it worse. And I'm like, fucking Jay. And I'm like, I have to take this to car wash. It was <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so and I'm like, that better not be a player. <laughs> So there's somebody in this building that's been doing that for years, right? <laughs> so he texted me last night, and he's like, he's like, uh, my wife just texted me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. She's like, she got out of the car and noticed that there was something on the back window, and she's been driving around the car all day. <laughs> she said, when she saw what it was, it just almost like it flew off and just hit me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, <laughs> oh, my God. I was just dying, but I was like, the, but the way he tells I, things and says things, oh, he's, man, it's he's just the, the best. He's the best thing ever, ever man. And, and, and like that, what he did to me, I know it was him, and I was so, so mad. I had to go to the car wash because the car was like it's gray, right? And and so black is terrible, right yeah. here. Like I wouldn't own a black car here, yeah, because no. you, it's a full time no. job to keep it clean. 100%. Gray or white, yeah, here, right where where I live, black's fine. Right in the summer, it's not great in the winter, but like, and here's gray, so I don't take it very often because it's gray. Like, it, it you have to be on top of the car to know it's dirty, <laughs> yeah. But this thing that was drawn on it was so prevalent, like, it was just sticking out at you like a pimple on the end of your nose. <laughs> oh, yeah, I and I had to take it to the car wash. And I'm like, God damn it. And Jay's like, Well, just see if that membership still works. <laughs> I was like, Jay, you and I both know the membership doesn't work. To the, who's paying it? You're not paying it, it's prevalent, uh, <laughs> right? it's just like boom. <laughs> But anyway, that's uh, the Jay story of the uh, week. So Jay, he's Jay's a good one. So anyway, gentlemen, Joe, best of luck this weekend. Enjoy Thank your you. Thanksgiving, Mr. DeWolf family. Thank, Thank you. you so much for yes. hosting the guys. That's awesome. Mikey, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. It's the, 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 the um, driver. The driver. <laughs> right? And uh, good luck to this they're weekend. Gonna, they're going to earn their Thanksgiving meal. Hey, yeah, so what, what time are you eating tomorrow? At, we eat in the afternoon. After they practice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call you from Subway. Yeah. Hey, what time does this come out? Because I haven't told my wife we're practicing yet. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. I'll text her right now. <laughs> anyway. oh, she's going to be pumped, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. yeah. yeah. All right. You anyway, guys have a happy Thanksgiving, guys. Yeah, Aaron, happy thank Thanksgiving. you. Shout out to T2Go. Appreciate always awesome sponsors. You guys are great. Till the next one, guys. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 43. This is a good one. We're going to start off with guests with Rami. Hello. And sister, Hope Martinez. Hello. The, the famous film writer, director, teacher, extraordinaire, I don't producer. Know about famous, but well, other you're, things, yes. You're getting there. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. On my you way. know, I, I was fortunate enough to meet you a couple of weeks ago here at one of the games and through a mutual friend, Evan Borregaris, mm -hmm. who we were just talking. Evan, you're the man. I don't care. You're hilarious. Love you. And he's not a waiter. I'm not a waiter. He's not a waiter. <laughs> Yet. Yes. <laughs> but he's he's aspiring to be, which is a good thing. So can't wait to meet sorry, you. Sorry, Rami, I'm just Evan. calling you up. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to meet you in person, Evan. But Evan, I love you, buddy. I hope to see you soon. But we were fortunate enough to meet through Evan. Yes. And uh, you were at one of the games a couple of weeks and weekends ago, and I I'm assuming you had a good time. Oh yeah. Because you're back. It was my first hockey game ever, actually. I'd never been to a hockey game before. So this was that's, my first one. I'm not going to say it's sad, but that's sad, Hope. You know <laughs> but what it mean? was you a happy day. Sad. I it was like, it's very sad. This no. was fun. It was actually a lot of fun. What? Okay, I'm <laughs> going to back you up. What do you mean actually? <laughs> well, because I'm more, you know, I was like one of those kids that I joined sports because my friends were in sports and <laughs> I want to hang out with them. And, but I wasn't ever a very good player. Like, I, I just wasn't. I, well, she I always fouled out. not skilled in that area. Yeah, you always fouled out. It's because well, you have an older brother. You, or yeah, or a brother. Yeah, she's like, is that how many how many fouls do I get? <laughs> and this is <laughs> the first story. first quarter. I was in middle school, St. Yes, Patrick's at St. Patrick's. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So you get fouled out all the time. Once. So or now twice. we're learning the true side of you. <laughs> but then everybody clapped for me. It was like positive reinforcement. It was like, yay, you got fouled out. Yay. That that was us, Hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Hope is because you were truly terrible at the sport. They were just like, oh, we got to yeah. go or something. Aww. I'm only she, teasing. You. Yeah. That, that, that's well, probably exactly that. why they clapped. Right. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to, my daughter, I talk about my daughter a lot. She was horrible at basketball, too. Oh, yeah. And she would get fouled out all the time. Mm. And that was like, watching basketball to me, 
is watching grass grow or paint dry. You know what I mean? It's just there's just there's nothing exciting about it. I think it's more fun to play than you know watch for me at least. You know, uh, yeah, I think to play maybe. I would agree with you on middle school basketball. Middle school <laughs> basketball. So you're you're a hockey fan. Uh, sort of, kind you of. Know, yeah, I've, I've been to a couple games. So, yeah. but you've been to the Vegas games. Yeah. There's no comparison. Golden Knights. And you just moved back to El Paso, which is awesome. Yeah, two months ago. I'm happy to be back. Are you Are you gonna get back in education? Uh, or are you no, gonna stick I'm, with the server I'm, side? I'm server uh, side of things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> before I enter the service industry at Cafe Central, I'm gonna stick around and help some uh, elderly Evan. people. Evan. Evan. Yeah, Evan. boy. I'm going to try and help uh, some elderly people because now I work for HomeWatch Caregivers. Which is awesome, which we were talking with your mom just a little bit off the air. And we're going to have you guys come back on the podcast. And we're going to truly just focus on that because I think there's a, such a great service that people provide. And obviously the elderly need, need it. You know what I yeah. mean? So you're going to focus on that. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, I help the kids. Now I'm helping the older kids. That's good. Well, you know what? It's, it's a, this is going to sound bad. It's a never ending thing. It's like death and taxes. Yeah. Right. So, Hope, let's talk about this movie. Let's do it. Gloria. Yes. Start from the beginning. How'd you, how'd you come up with this? Um, so, a lot of the story is kind of based on my grandparents on my mom's side, my mom's parents, and, you know, kind of a combination of most of the stories that my grandma told me, because mm -hmm. I was really close with her growing up, and a couple stories my grandpa told me as well, but most of them are, are stories based on things that my my grandma told me a couple things that my mom told me, a couple things that my aunts told me, but mostly came from my grandma. And then I added a lot of my own fictionalized elements because it's not it's not a documentary by any means. Um, so there's parts of it that are Evan's calling. Uh, <laughs> is that Evan? <laughs> um, I'll be right with you, Evan. <laughs> there's, there, there's parts of it that are fictionalized um, that I've added a lot to. So I, I don't, I don't want to say it's like a documentary or it follows their lives exactly because there's a lot that I added that is fiction. But yeah, it's based on my grandparents and my mom's. So I was really close with my grandma, with my grandma Gloria. So, so was my brother. Like our whole family was. Sure. Um, but yeah, I was super close with her. Um, yeah, so it just kind of came from being inspired by somebody that you really love and you, you look up to and you care about and you miss and you want to kind of, I guess, bring them back in a way. Sure. You, you want to feel like they're, they're back um, by, I think, by kind of retelling her story and casting characters. It was almost like she was, she was back here just right. for a little bit. You know what I mean? And every time you watch the movie, it kind of feels like that again. Um, because, you know, I think people are inspired, not, not just artists, but people in general are inspired by people that, that they admire and that they love and that they look up to. That's, right. And that's really where it came from. And it, it, you know, I've watched bits and pieces. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't watched the entire, you know, film. But, um, there's, you know, from the, the clips that I've seen, there's a little bit of everything. You know, there's humor in it. There's laughter. There's a little bit of drama. You know, again, you know, it's just clips portraying certain things. But obviously, with the fiction, nonfiction, we obviously know you, you need that mm -hmm. for, for any film or any thing to, to catch wind, so to speak. But what, what was the greatest, you know, attribute that your, your grandmother had in your eyes? The greatest attribute. What, what do you admire the most? And I'm going to get to you, Rami. Okay. Um, I think, oh gosh, there's so many things. I, would I just look at you right now, just... You can just see that sparkle in your eye thinking about your grandmother. Yeah, there's there's so many things. I mean, definitely her sense of humor. I sure. don't know if I admire that the most, but I probably love that the most. Um, you know, even in like the darkest times or even when she's telling kind of a sad story about something that happened in the past, at the very end, she'll just add something and it'll make me laugh so hard. And I'm like, Grandma, you can't say that. <laughs> You can't say that, Grandma. But it makes me laugh. I mean, for sure, if my grandma's on a podcast, she'd be canceled right away. Right. <laughs> but yeah. then there'd be like an underground of people that would keep listening to her because sure. they're like, I want to hear it. Um, but yeah, she, she was very honest. I guess honesty. She was very honest. That's um, a good thing. She was very funny. And, you know, in the, in the moments when you expect her, when you expect it to happen the least, she could be very soft and kind. Also, she was very like a hard person. Sure. Um, but she could sense at least you know with the grandkids um when you needed to hear something like she knew exactly what to say to make you not do something or do something right. to inspire you she just knew what to say that's cool um, and i was i was talking to your mom off off the, the broadcast um you know she said that both your grandparents were hams 
you know, just like to have oh, a, yeah, a I good think sense so. of humors and, mm-hmm. and more so your grandfather to a degree, but that, that's cool. You know, and Rami, what, what do you, what are your greatest things that, that your grandmother brought or your grandfather? Uh, first of all, my grandmother, like Hope said, she was kind of a truth cannon, you know, whether you wanted to hear a it or not. A truth cannon. But she would get things kind of wrong, you know, she would say like, all right, and so, you know, bring me the Kodak camera. She'd be like, bring me the Kotex camera, you know, and, <laughs> you know, or she was, you know, awesome. I, I'm a teenager and I'm walking through and my cousins are teenagers and she goes, you're a jet setter without any jets, you know, <laughs> and just right at the knees, just make sure just everybody, cut everybody, everybody was, well, nobody thought they were too big. So she was really good at being the needle to our balloon, um, which I appreciate now. <laughs> Um, and my grandpa, he was just, he was just like the coolest guy ever. You know, I think that in his mind, he was Dean Martin of El Paso, sure. you know? Well, so, judging by his picture, he's a pretty good looking right, dude. He's a good looking guy yeah. and good genetics. So, um, yeah, we, he was, he was really funny. You know, he used to, he used to say he, he would have made it in, um, in, uh, Hollywood. Uh, what did they say? Hope, cause he was, what was he auditioning for? To be uh, Donald Duck. Oh, yeah. He has this whole story. He, yeah, my grandpa told me about he, how he auditioned he screen tests in Los Angeles years ago. And, you know, at the very end of the story, he, he actually had an agent come up to him and say, I want to screen test you tomorrow at this time. And this was like in the, I want to say the late 30s, early 40s. And so he said he went and um, he said, if I got the part, I'd be across from one of the biggest stars of the 1940s. And I was like, who's that, grandpa? He's like, Donald Duck. I was like, <laughs> Grandpa, is this whole thing a lie or is just parts of it a lie? He's like, oh, the end's a little lie. I didn't go, but I was invited, but I was too scared to go. I was like, Grandpa, you didn't go? You were invited, you didn't go? He's like, no, I was, I was, uh, I should have gone. You know, I still think about that to this day. I, I, I find that that's kind of like the main vein when I talk to a lot of, you know, older people, they usually say it's what I didn't do that I regret. Right more than what I did do. So I always try and kind of live my life by just just do yeah. the things you're thinking of just doing. Do it. Just yeah. do it. And imagine, you don't the, imagine those two people married. So <laughs> <laughs> never a dull moment. That was, that was it. It was like Lucy and Ricky. Yes. <laughs> Archie yeah. Bunker and his yeah, wife. Yeah, yeah. Lucy and Ricky in El Paso for El Paso. sure. That was Well that, you know that that's that's great though. Obviously they had a good life together and I was talking to your mom. Obviously you know, there was obviously that love story and, and they truly loved one another, you know, despite everything that went on, you know, and I think that that's every family. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't met a normal family. I'm not to say that they were normal. So I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But with the, when we were talking, every family goes through hardships. They go through triumphs. They go through everything. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's what makes family family, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, yeah, Lord, I, Lord knows, you know, I know in my family's like the Clampets. You know, back home, <laughs> I tell you, there's drama every other day, and I'm not even—I haven't been home for almost thirty years. Wow! And I'm still part of drama. I don't get it. You well, know, I think that everybody has a drama. moment where they're like, "This could be a movie." The difference is, Hope made the movie. That's so crazy. That's that, that's the difference in yeah. our family, which yeah. is really neat. And so, it, it, we we talked again. Like your your whole family is sort of involved. A lot of them. Yeah, yeah a lot of them. A lot involved. Of them. And do you do anything as well? Um, well, we were, I, I, I played a part right. in the movie. Yeah. I played my grandpa, actually. Yeah. You know. Well, you can see, like, honestly, in the, his picture, you yeah. can see a lot it of this very, in both of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, but yeah, and I, I uh, Hope came to me a year before because she was casting, getting, yeah. pre, you know, what they call it, Hope pre, pre-movie pre work. Um, pre, pre-production. Pre-production. Yeah. And uh, she said, would you be interested? And part of me, and I've never done a movie, it's kind of my, this really was my first rodeo. And I, <laughs> it might have been my, the ham and me. I was like. No one else is gonna play my grandpa but me, <laughs> <laughs> so I jumped in and uh, yeah, I played paid him in midlife, in that, the, uh, as a man of his time in the fifties and sixties. Sure, and and you know, watching it like going back in you know the high school, you know to modern time, you know and back to high school, just every step of the way, and it was filmed here in El Paso. Mm-hmm. What was the main? Lo- I guess you guys were everywhere. Were you guys in El Paso High? Um. <clears throat> no, we actually thought about using El Paso High because we wanted to shoot one or two scenes originally in Bowie, but Bowie, the original Bowie that my grandparents went to, it doesn't exist anymore. It was like, it's moved. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. It's moved. Um, so we were thinking of El Paso High because that it definitely looks historical, but we didn't end up shooting in El Paso High. We, we shot in a home um, in, in a neighborhood near the original Bowie. 
And uh, that was the home that was like the blast from the past home, you know, when we shot all the high school scenes and yeah. things like that. And uh, we actually shot a lot of the present day scenes with Apollo in the present day um, at my father's house. So I asked my father if we could use his house and he said, he said, sure. sure. I think, I think in the beginning as a filmmaker, you, you got to think of like who, you know, and all the locations and things that you can use for uh, either a very low price or no price at all, right. because you're coming in with sometimes close to no money. Right. And so you're just trying to see what places do I have access to that I can use. And, you know, you're trying to do as much as you can with what you have. Mm. And so that was kind of my mentality, like do as much as you can do the best you can with what you have sure. right now. And, you know, obviously, I don't know anything about making a movie or anything at all. And the, obviously, the effort that goes into it, you know, from writing it to directing it to cutting it to ev producing everything. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you from, obviously, the thought you were obviously thinking about it before the wheels were in motion, but from the time you started, say, production and, and getting the actors, how long did it take you? From pre-production, like, yeah. beginning Like, to from start to... To finishing We're the done. film yeah. or editing? Editing. To the end of editing. Um, probably a little over a year, wow. I would say. Just a little bit over a year. That's a yeah. long time. Yeah, I, I know a lot of other films, especially you know big budget films, they go way longer than that. But it felt like forever, <laughs> especially in, in post-production. I felt like post-production is where I felt the most lost because my skills are not in editing. So I really had to find you know a great editor, which I did find in L.A. He's <coughs> you know, amazing, Robert Brakey. And, um, you know, e e even learning from all the post-production mm -hmm. um, people that I found. Um, and your hands are on everything. Yeah, because I'm, you know, I, I wrote it and, and directed it. And so, um, and I, I, I helped find, you know, f financers as well. Um, so it was, it <laughs> I was in everything. Yeah. I was in a little bit of everything. A little bit yeah. of everything. And the, uh -huh. stress that, the stress that goes into it, yep. you know, and, you know, not only from the actor side, but it's your family. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure there was a lot of stress and, um, you know, mom saying to you like, hey, I don't want you to put that in there or, I, you know, I'm just talking off wing here, but I, I would assume that happened. And I'm sure there was a lot of conflict. No, I don't mean conflict, but there's discussions like, yes, no, maybe so. Mm -hmm. and absolutely. Absolutely. It has, there has to be. It's, yeah. You know, especially when you're talking about your family directly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, it's just what is. Right. And it has to be hard. Well, I think that all of us um, saw Hope's vision, yeah. and so we knew that, you know, and my, my aunt did, you know, costuming, and my, you know, we all had, <laughs> it was like, you know, different parts of a part. When, when I was growing up, and my, we had a part. Other duties as required. We all got jobs, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, your job exactly. is this, your job is sweeping the floor, your and so all of us jumped in as a family to help uh, Hope, m you know, make this into a reality, and it was also, you know, very close to home because it was two people that we cared about very sure deeply. yeah so you know it everything else you know it was there are so there were some parts that were fictionalized but the heart of the story was real right and i i would imagine it took an army mm -hmm. to to do and um you know it's the, just meeting you last or two weeks ago you know just it was really cool so you you, you help evan um i was i actually met evan um through Christopher Velasquez and a, fr a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, and he um, introduced me to Evan because Evan needed an acting coach at sure, the time, yeah. and so I was his acting coach for you know a period of time, and he actually got cast in a short film in Los Angeles, and so he needed me to go with him there to to the film set in, in L.A. So I went with him, and you know I think that film at least I was there for maybe four or five days. And that's actually how I met Apollo. That's how I met Apollo Duhakis because he was starring See, no opposite good of Evan. Deed. Right, good for you. Yeah, and so you know, there's a lot of downtime on on film sets. As anyone who's been on film set knows, there's you know times when you're rushing, rushing, and then other times just kind of sitting there for an hour or two. Um, especially if you're an acting coach, you're kind of just watching, and you know, I'm helping my Evan um, talk to him. But you know, and during the downtime, I would just sit there and talk to Apollo, and <clears throat> we got to know each wow. other. And uh, I kind of, I was maybe 30 pages into this screenplay, Gloria, I didn't know who was going to be in it. I didn't know who I was going to, I was just kind of writing it. I didn't even know where it was going to go because I've always written since I was little. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I was talking to him about it and uh, first just kind of in jest and just talking with no like goal in mind. And then after a while, I thought, wait a minute, one of my main characters is kind of, I think Apollo could play this main character. That's awesome. 
what am I, th I'm literally talking to him right now. I should just bring it up. So I, I brought it up to him and he, you know, he mentioned, yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd be interested, but why don't you finish the screenplay and then send it to me? And then, you know, if it feels like a good fit for both of us, then we'll go from there. So I, I finished it as soon as I got home to El Paso and I sent it to him and he agreed to be in it. And then at that point it was really <laughs> yeah, you can't up back to up. me. I was like, okay, he's in it. Now I Just have kidding. to find everyone else. <laughs> Yeah, I have to find everyone else. And so that was like the big motivational moment. That's awesome. Um, from that point on. Once once I knew I had him, I was Just like, a little okay. kickstart is what you needed, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. You know, like, speaking about downtime, my daughter was in a commercial for um, Amazon Glasses. This is, oh, we're talking nice. probably four or five years ago. So she's, she plays hockey, as I mentioned, and they needed a female hockey player. So somebody in Austin called and said, hey, does your daughter want to do this? I think she'd be great. So I was like, sure. So we drove out there. She auditioned and the, the, whatever, she got it. And uh, so we, my wife and I went. They had this big production set up and I'm like, she's like 12. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and it's just her. Like, you know, it's, she's the, they call her the talent. I'm like, no, that's Cameron. <laughs> you don't need to call her talent. Like, she's zero, got zero talent. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and then they're like, you know, there's there's food for you guys and everything. I'm like, crafty. Uh. There was food everywhere. Yeah, and we're talking good stuff. Oh, I you know bet. what I mean? I was like, man, I just ate like at the that. hotel. <laughs> you know, they didn't tell me this. I didn't get the disclaimer. So anyway, <laughs> then she's like, the she had an assistant. I'm like, oh wow. I'm like, good for no, her. no, like she she does she doesn't <laughs> need an assistant. Like my wife is very much by her side for a lot of her because she does modeling and whatnot. But yeah, um, I said no, we're good. And they're like, the lady's like, no, no, like. She it's paid for. Um, she has an assistant. I'm like, holy cow, what are we doing? You know? <laughs> but it was what did just the assistant do? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> she assisted me by Seriously. answering questions. I'm like, so, like, is this going to take all day? Like, when do you think we're going to be done? <laughs> you know, that kind of she stuff. She was more your assistant. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, hey, no, but anyway. But it was a really cool experience. Yeah. And uh, um, anyway, so I know what you mean by a lot of downtime because there was a lot of downtime. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. And she wrecked some equipment because she had to shoot, the, shoot on the net. And they're like, well, Cameron, can you take a slap shot? I'm like, I'm like, how expensive is that stuff around the net? Well, it's really expensive. I'm like, well, you might want to rethink this because yeah. chances are she's going to hit it. Yeah. Sure enough. Oh, she no. hit something lighting and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, that better, I hope we're not paying for that. You know, yeah. like in my head, because she destroyed it. Oh, they're like, oh, no, it's all good. And they get you check out. with the assistant? Yeah, I said, assistant, like, <laughs> that's coming out of your pay. You never told me about that. Assistant <laughs> but, probably had their mouth wide open. But it was pretty funny. Anyway, downtime. Assistant. <laughs> so what, what, what's next on the horizon? Um, so I'm working on a, a feature right now, kind of more based on um, kind of growing up outside of El Paso. You know, I left El Paso when I was 18, and I moved. First, I was in actually San Antonio for a bit, and then I was in Chicago for a long, long period of time in my 20s, and then I went to LA and New York later on. But this this film, this next feature I'm writing is more about my time in Chicago, and it's kind of about kind of moving away from everything that you know and thinking that you know it all and mm -hmm. thinking that you're an adult now because you're 18 and you know everything, and then finding out in the real world, I have no family around, I have nobody I know, I'm by myself, I'm with strangers, this is the real world, and this is what it's really like. Wow. And, you know, I guess just that realization, I, I think anyone who's ever moved away could relate to it, but, but not even just that, it's kind of about trying to find your way, um, trying to find a soulmate, trying to find the right job, trying to find the right friends, trying, just trying to find where you fit in in every category of life and feeling um, like you can't find it, right. you know, you're lost. And, you know, I think people in their 20s have felt like that. I definitely think people in their 30s and 40s and 50s, I mean, in every decade, you felt like that. We, we, you know, and it all, I almost feel like sometimes once you feel like you have it all figured out, then you found your soulmate. Then all of a sudden, you, you know, you realize that the, these aren't the right friends. There's always something, There's always something going on that has to change. But this, but, uh, you know, I think the reason why I chose to choose this period of my life is because every category was confusing, like, you know, from who I'm supposed to be with, who my friends are supposed to be, to what my career is supposed to be, to where I'm supposed to live. Like, um, just everything was completely confusing. Right. And I think kind of trying to find your way through that um, is quite a story, I think, for, for anybody. Sure. So that's that's kind of it's what life, my next... Right? That's life, yeah. That's kind of what my next... It's, it's about searching. It's, it's so, searching so do you, everything. 
obviously your first I'm not saying your first project, but you, you know the film that you did was based on reality, mm-hmm. like you know pers- so, lo- yeah, loosely based yeah. right uh-huh. but now like now you're writing about yourself it's more about yeah, it's more about my own experiences, but it's also about um you know, I think when I was I want to say like 23, 24, I think I kind of hit like a brick wall where I, I didn't really know what I was doing wrong, but I felt like I was, you know, kind of emotionally in a place where I, where I needed help. So I actually started going to a therapist at that age. And that was really scary for me because, you know, I come from like, you don't go to therapists. Right. Yeah. Figure it out. <laughs> you know, you don't go to therapists. Um, Therapy is for crazy people, you know. And, and actually, that's kind of a line in the script, you know, because I'm talking to my therapist <laughs> about this, you know, where I'm sitting there going, I don't go to therapy. I don't know why I'm here. This is for crazy people. Like, that's literally one of the first scenes. And it's funny, right. but it's a scene that I, I remember having. With my so therapist. are you are you in the are you starring yourself? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not in it. No, 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 I couldn't. Yeah, I, I think it's it's hard to objectively look at something and then be in it as well because you know in every shot you're kind of like I'm trying to see if this is the best scene and if it was me I'd be like okay that is the best shot but oh my hair looks weird there or why does my eye look it's it's so hard because you're trying to look at yourself objectively and for me it's just too difficult sure like I have I have to be completely behind the camera because I can't you know it's too much of me in there if that makes sense. so is it more telling like a documentary side of things or is it more of a movie um i think it's gonna be kind of similar to gloria in that it's gonna be loosely based i mean there's definitely things that really did happen that i'm gonna include and then there's gonna be other things that are fictionalized other things that i maybe embellish here and there for the you know sake of the story other things that are completely fictionalized and then other things that are completely real um so kind of weaving all that together rami are you gonna be in this movie I, uh, yeah, my sister always saves a good juicy character part for me. So like, she's she's probably gonna make me like a sassy barista, or like a wait, what, what's or, with you or, in service? Or, or you know a waiter, what I mean? Like, a, waiter or a, wait- a waiter. I see. I see. My brother is like the manager of intelligentsia in Chicago, and he's just like, we don't have whipped cream here. Yeah, go to Starbucks. It's soy cream. <laughs> we only have soy cream. We only have foam. We don't do whipped <laughs> don't cream. Care. We have cream with no foam. <laughs> We don't even. Or is have it the coffee. other way around? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, you know, I, I like to have fun. So don't, you know, it's, it's Evan. We're not talking smack, but we love you, buddy. I hope he. He's going to see this. You know that, right? Of course, he's probably he's gonna, watching he's, it right he's, now. He's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow he's here, and he's going to be. I'm going to say, I'm going to give him your number. Okay, Evan. He has it. <laughs> <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> But he's awesome. So that's that's next. And when can we expect that to come out? Um, well, I'm just starting to write that right right now. So I would expect, gosh, we were first originally planning to shoot it this summer, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen because of, you know a lot of other things kind of um, in the in the mix. So it's, we're probably going to be shooting that next summer. Um, so probably like, gosh, two year two years from now, depending on distribution and things like that. So we'll see if we get distribution for that. But yeah, and, and now I'm just you know really starting to write it and. And I think this one is is um, it feels more vulnerable because it's about it's more about me versus you know my grandparents and my family. This is like about me, and so you know anytime I start writing, I'm just like, oh my gosh, do I want people to know this about me? Like this is really what happened. But I think in any really good story, you have to be vulnerable. If sure. you're just guarded all the time, that's not interesting. You know, um, being guarded is an interesting why you are guarded is interesting right. and so i think kind of going underneath like i just need to get rid of being guarded and i just need to be vulnerable just with be this you. script and that's what it's got to be if it's going to be good you have to bear your soul if you're not willing to bear your soul what is the point right. what are you doing it for you know and, that, and that's a good lesson i guess for really everybody right yeah. you know just in the like there's going to be opinions on you no matter what you do what you say how you are what you look like you know what you you know it people are society is terrible mm-hmm. and we this is a whole nother subject we get into which so i'm not going to get into it because we'll be here for two hours but um i think the the key point is just be yourself and and roll with the punches and that's what people want to see anyway yeah. yeah you know and they're going to portray it whether it's good bad or indifferent so i think what you're doing is awesome you know, and best thank of luck you. with that project. Thank you so and, much. And, you know, Rami, it's <laughs> great to have you back in El Paso, man. Glad you know, it's back. nice to meet you. And, and ma'am, it's nice to meet you. We're going to have you guys back on the show, and we're going to talk about 
healthcare and and elderly care. I think that would be really really cool, and and maybe you guys can start a podcast. I think that would be really good. You had a great idea. Rami would be all about that. I think he could do it. And honestly, (laughs) it's not hard. You you have all the equipment anyway. You know what I mean? Um, If I can do it, anybody can do it. (laughs) Trust me. (laughs) Trust me on that. But I appreciate you guys jumping on and, and taking the time out of your morning to come down. Um, best of luck, Hope. Thank you, know, you so much. I, I think you're going to do wonders, and, and it's Thank been you. a pleasure to meet you. And Rami, it's nice to meet you. You too. And I'm sure we'll see you again on a hockey game, at I'm least sure, I hope, yeah. and we'll have you guys back on, on the podcast, and uh, we'll go from there, guys. Perfect. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys. And, and everybody, make sure you jump on social media, Hope Martinez, The Gloria Movie. The Gl- yeah, The Gloria Movie. You can find us on Facebook and you can also go to Instagram and type in, I believe, The Gloria Movie as well. And you'll see behind the scenes photos and videos and trailers. And and uh, actually, you'll also see if you go to the Instagram, um, all the film festivals that we're getting into recently. So we're submitting to film festivals. And if you're curious, you can kind of go on there and follow us and see what film festivals we're getting cool. into. Cool. Yes. Lots of information. Mm-hmm. And again, everybody, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, thank you.